Hey gang, Masada Yub here for Wilson Combat Channel. Be sure to subscribe to the Wilson Combat Channel and remember to press that notification bell to stay on top of new material. I've been asked to talk to you today about some of the subtleties of trigger finger placement when in a drawn gun ready position. We've all been told on target, on trigger, off target, off trigger. I'll tell you, I don't think that's enough in the defensive context as opposed to the sporting context. On target basically means you've got somebody at gunpoint. If they are at gunpoint, seen here safely with this chamber empty, magazine out, Wilson Combat Glock. If you have gone on trigger, on target, and now someone sees you pointing a gun at somebody and yells, hey! And that startled response causes you to fire the shot. Whoever just yelled, hey, witnessed you kill an unarmed man whose hands are up here like this. I would say the finger does not enter the trigger guard unless and until you are in the very act of intentionally discharging the weapon. And I hope we're all agreed on that. Now, getting back to exactly how we do that, exactly where we index that trigger finger in a drawn gun ready position. Different schools give different recommendations. I've seen some, if you watch closely what I'm doing here, recommend placing the trigger finger right up on the barrel or in the ejection port. Uh, that's fine for a cold gun, but to get habituated to that, if you're on a thousand round a day shooting range class, drill after drill, you're gonna burn the hell out of that finger and that finger is gonna be disinclined to take that position. If you look closely, it also tends to break the hold somewhat. On the opposite extreme, finger on front edge of trigger guard. I've seen schools that teach this, actually even one major police department that teaches this. At my school, that is a safety violation. Let me tell you why. Back in the late 1970s, a police officer I knew in a community probably 45 miles from mine experienced an unintended discharge with tragic results that left one man mangled and left that officer leaving the law enforcement profession. The suspect had begun a high-speed pursuit. The officer had called in and he knew his nearest backup was about 10 minutes away. The suspect was driving like a maniac. Motorists were veering off the road to escape him. And when the man ran the car into a ditch and was trying to drive back out, the officer knew it would be a danger to the public he was sworn to serve if he allowed this man to get back on the road. He drew his pistol, a privately owned department approved 1911. This example here is a Wilson Combat. His was a Colt, empty chamber, em no, empty magazine wall for our demonstration. His academy had taught him to carry it cocked and locked, and in a gunpoint situation, put your trigger finger on the front edge of the trigger guard. The thumb, of course, would be on the safety. As he approached the vehicle the, with the gun drawn, as you always would in a felony stop situation like this, as he reached the door, driver's door with the open window, the suspect reached his hand down under his thigh as if going for a gun. Not wanting to kill him, the officer reached across him with his left hand to grab the right hand. But now the pistol was in proximity within reach of the driver's hand. The driver reached up, grabbed like this, and jerked the gun toward himself. The straight finger on the front of the guard and a firm grip is held taut. The officer's thumb had been on the engaged safety. As the hand closed, the thumb wiped off the safety, finger snapped back in, and at a distance from about here, uh, the medical report said total avulsion of the lower mandible. It took off the, the guy's chin and front teeth like a chainsaw. The officer was charged with felony aggravated assault. And while he was acquitted at trial, uh, it destroyed a very promising law enforcement career. That taught me finger on front edge of trigger guard is not safe. And we've seen it much more recently in a high profile case in New York City a few years ago. Uh, New York versus Peter Liang. Peter Liang was a young rookie officer, NYPD. He was working what they call their vertical patrol. A great deal of violent crime occurs in low-cost Section 8 housing. 
uh, which tends to be basically closely stacked apartment buildings. A lot of the crime takes place in the stairwells. Uh, the bad guys will break the lights because they know the, in, the innocent victim of rape or mugging caught in, in the dark in a narrow area has little hope against them. So the officers would generally check the roof first and then go down uh, by the stairs floor by floor. Because many officers had been assaulted uh, in those stairwells, the officers were taught if, if you believe there's danger, you hear someone moving toward you that shouldn't be, things of that nature, have your gun already out. Officer Liang uh, heard a disturbance one floor below him. He drew his privately owned department approved Glock 19 pistol. Again, this example is a Wilson Combat and is clearly unloaded. He was left handed. The Academy had taught him to index his finger up on the frame. On the Glock, for example, I would index on the takedown niche here. But one of his training officers had taught him finger alongside the trigger. And you've got to remember, when you're a rookie, the FTO, the field training officer, is the alpha, and you tend to condition yourself to do what you're told. So the gun is being held like this. Now, he, uh, as he tries to push open the door to enter the stairwell to see what's happening, the door resists. Human nature, something resists your movement, you push harder. When it suddenly gives, there's a postural disturbance. We lose our balance. There is also a sympathetic tightening of the hand. And when that happened, that finger held taut, snapped back with impact, and fired the gun. The bullet went down the stairwell, struck the concrete stairwell where it had been named, and glanced down, traveled along it, and struck in the heart and killed a young man named Akai Gurley. The result was a manslaughter case and really two lives destroyed, uh, the lost life of young Akai Gurley, but also that of the officer. I had been unable to attend as an expert witness for him because I was at a pre-scheduled pre murder trial in Montana that day and that week. For whatever reason, he was found guilty uh, during the sentencing phase. I wrote an amicus brief to the, um, to the judge explaining Colonel Cooper's four rules of firearm safety, which were also adopted and taught by the New York City Police Department at their academy. Treat every gun as if it's loaded. Certainly he did. Do not allow the weapon to point at anything you're not prepared to see destroyed. The gun was pointed at the concrete wall of the stairwell, the one safest or least unsafe place in the entire environment. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. He had, in fact, kept his finger off the trigger. Unfortunately, he'd used the wrong method that he had been taught by one of his alphas. And finally, be certain of your target in the backstop. Well, see the point made above. He did have it pointed at the backstop, the concrete wall. When the, the judge understood all that, he uh, suspended any time served and sentenced him to community service. But he's still a convicted felon for the rest of his life, his career gone, and Akai Gurley, of course, is still dead. So sometimes these small subtleties of things like where do you put your index finger can be literally life-changing or life-or-death decisions. So if we're not going to put the finger up on the barrel or into the ejection port, and we're not going to put it on the front of the trigger guard, most of us will put the finger alongside the frame. It's the easiest, it's the most comfortable, and it's very handy for the firearms instructors and safety officers, because whether you're looking from the left or you're looking for the right, you can see that empty space and the absence of the finger tells the safety officer the finger is not where it should not be. One problem with that, on a pistol like this 1911, also a Wilson Combat, Empty chamber, empty magazine. With the finger straight, look closely here. The right-handed shooter, the majority of shooters, the fin straight finger is pressing on the opposite side of the slide stop, which 1911 shooters know could also be called the takedown button. And if you get an older gun, an out-of-spec gun, a very well-worn gun, that can get loose enough that when that tight hold presses it to the left, it starts to slip out. And when you fire your first shot, your 1911 begins to disassemble itself. 
Now, it's not going to fly apart. What it's going to do is lock up so tight, it takes two men, a boy, and a rubber mallet to get that thing back in and get the gun back going in a battery. Unless, you can remember, you're cool enough under fire to do the armorous press and retract exactly to the right position and press back in, which if you can do that, let me know so I can sit at your feet and absorb your tactical coolness because most of the rest of us probably can't. Being a 1911 guy myself for much of my police career, if you look closely what I'm doing with my index finger, I came up after looking at that case from the 70s with this. The finger flexed above the frame. Now with a short trigger guard gun like the 1911, particularly if you have large hands, one problem with straight finger is when you do need the gun, when you do need to fire, it can snag on that short guard. If the finger is here flexed on the frame, it slides right in. From here, if the finger is straight, it can snap back with impact, as happened in that earlier case I spoke of. However, we're cocked. We have the grip safety depressed. I can stab my finger coming in from the flex position, and because it's coming across the trigger instead of straight back into it, we have vastly reduced the likelihood of an unintended discharge. On a Beretta pistol, you index right here. On the Glock, I would be index on a similar gun, I'd be indexing on the takedown niche. On a double action revolver with a Smith & Wesson, for example, I'd index on the, uh, the side plate screw. But we have a felt index there, and we have one other advantage with the flex finger over the straight finger. I've seen here safely with a dummy gun, a rings dummy gun version of the Wilson uh, Beretta Brigadier. With the straight finger, you have a weakness in terms of weapon retention, that is, resisting a disarming attempt. Let's say that you were the invisible man and you were holding this Beretta on me. I, or anybody who's thought about it, their first movement of a disarm is going to be a lateral strike to the weapon simultaneous with getting off the midline of trajectory. It drives the gun against the hand like this. And what will happen here, if you can look, can look closely, as the gun goes here, the trigger finger is hyperextended. The, the other fingers are going to sympathetically release, and if you don't let go here, this finger is going to dislocate or break at the proximal joint. To see how that works, you don't even need a gun. To, as you watch this, take your hand like this. Make a fist and put the finger straight. Apply pressure here. This would be the gun being driven outward against the index finger. And you'll see how quickly the, th the remaining fingers sympathetically release, and this finger has to let go or the finger's going to break. Fascinating thing, though, if you flex the finger and now strike here, it's not going to happen. But, and again, you don't even need the, the dummy gun to do it. Take your finger and go from here to here now press in the same direction. The flex finger has strengthened the index finger enough that it's going to be able to resist that long enough for you to do a counter and get the hand off your weapon. So those are all the reasons that I personally, many years ago, decades ago, in the late 1970s, went to the recommendation of this, the finger flexed on the frame. I found that the safest and the fastest because you have immediate access. All upside, no downside, it's what I'd recommend. Again, I'm going to urge you to subscribe to the Wilson Combat Channel. There's a treasure trove of collected experience and knowledge available there. Be sure to hit that notification bell. I look forward to seeing you down the road. Shoot safe and stay safe. <laughs>